Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be installing black engine covers on my 2016 Triumph Thruxton R, as well as black heel guards and a blacked out sprocket cover. Um, as you can see, the sprocket cover and the heel guards are already gone. So I'm gonna start out with those as they'll be the easiest. Then we'll go into the process of the engine covers. So the heel guards are attached using these uh, star headed bolts and um, you'll notice there are two different lengths. There's a longer one, which is this one, and then a shorter one. The shorter ones are used for the heel guard that is by itself on the rider's left side of the bike. And then the longer bolts are used to hold the heel guard on the rider's right onto the sprocket cover. I don't suppose it helps anyone for me to hide anything I've discovered here. So let's talk about the fact that I actually just boogered up this hole. Um, and I do not know why. I believe that there was residue from the powder coating left in the holes. And uh, it got the bolts crooked and cross-threaded that. So now I'm going to have to get a tap and die set to straighten that out. Um, so if you've had these powder coated, you know, just be cautious, make sure you get everything in there straight. I don't remember the last time I stripped out a bolt, but it happened here today. So here I've got the heel guard on rider's left installed. I think it looks pretty good. And, uh, I used a dab of blue Loctite on both of those bolts to help hold them in place. So I did already mention that I have messed up the holes for the heel guards on here, but that's okay. I'm going to tap those out later for right now i am going to go ahead and mount it on the bike as it'll make it a little easier to deal with uh, in the future this is held in place by four eight millimeter bolts and those will go here there and then two down here you may have to kind of depress the brake lever to get it out of the way um, an extension is helpful for all four of these okay black sprocket covers installed um Again, a uh, dab of blue Loctite on those uh, eight mil bolts. And if you look up here, you can see that it's kind of hard to see in the video, but this, this textured black powder coat's very close to uh, the finish that was already on the engine. The sprocket cover and the heel guards were done for me by a local powder coater, uh, Tinsley Custom Coatings in the upstate of South Carolina. Um, I would have to recommend him if you're in the area. Did a great job and the uh, this textured black that he had, like I said, a great match for the factory color of this engine. Our next step is gonna be to drain the engine oil so we can swap over the engine covers. If you look under here, you can see that the uh, drain plug is actually this um, hex head bolt here. Um, and the service manual actually also recommends that you have the motorcycle on the side stand to drain, I'm guessing because that bolt is on that side. So we're gonna warm the bike up uh, as per the uh, shop manual, get everything flowing good, turn it off, let it sit for a few minutes so everything gathers at the bottom, and then uh, we'll pull that plug on the side stand, let the oil drain. Okay, so I'm gonna give the oil another couple minutes to drain, um, but this, uh, the, there's the drain plug there, and that was an eight millimeter hex head. Um, unfortunately for me, this bike actually had its oil change pretty recently, so it's kind of a, a little bit of a waste of an oil change, but that's okay. Um, I, I'm not gonna change the filter though with it being that recent, so just the oil this time. Okay, got the bike back up on the paddock stand per the um, shop manual. I have tightened the drain plug back to 25 Newton meters. And now we're going to go ahead and pull off the uh, alternator cover. So I've moved my oil catch uh, can underneath the cover that we're about to remove. I've also got a paper towel on the pipe here just to minimize the amount of oil that uh, drips out onto it. Just a very small bit of thinking head here. I'm going to go ahead and use a four millimeter hex head to take off this uh, little inspection cover while the uh, main cover is still attached to the bike and just make it a little easier. To There's a very specific pattern 
before removing the bolts on this cover. So here we have the order that the bolts are supposed to be removed and later reinstalled on the alternator cover. Uh, number four is the one that's cut off down at the bottom of the image. This was just uh, an issue with the aspect ratio, but there it is. Use that, pause the video here, make sure you follow that recommendation. Okay, so I've got the bolts removed and um, I like to lay them out like they came out. These do all appear to be the same size, even though I know that's not the case over on the clutch side, but um, you know, helps for consistency. I've also uh, had someone recommend to me that you could even punch them out and uh, stick them in a little cardboard or to keep them kind of organized. I just lay them out like this and uh, I've found that to be to be helpful for me. So one thing that I did not do in my video, but I would recommend as it's in the official procedure, is that located back behind the rear brake fluid reservoir is the place where the crank position sensor plugs into the main harness. Uh, it's recommended that you disconnect the battery and go ahead and unplug that sensor from there and note the, the, uh, the route of its wiring from the harness to the alternator cover. Um, this will make it easier to re for fully remove the alternator cover and work on it remotely. Um, you'll see in my video that I had to do everything right there at the bike because I skipped this step. Got the cover off, so now I gotta get the stator out. Do note that this cover is not necessarily easy to pull off. You're dealing with some pretty strong magnets here, so even once the bolts were out, it will pull straight off after that, maybe a little stuck with the gasket, but you may really have to pull it to get it off. I recommend wearing some mechanic style gloves so that you don't get your fingers pinched as the magnet tries to pull the cover back. The first thing that you need to do is remove these two bolts from the crank position sensor. After that, you'll remove the one bolt back here, which is holding on the cable stay. And then finally, you'll want to remove these three bolts, which are actually holding the stator in place. So now I've gotten this fully removed. I'm going to get a uh, razor blade and make sure and clean up uh, the little bits of gasket that are left. Uh, fortunately, with this being a relatively new bike, there's not nearly as much as there was when I did the same thing with my track bike here recently. The other thing I did is I'm sitting here and I've got a paper towel laid up over the top. Um, that I'm using to catch the little bits as I scrape them off just to make sure I don't have anything, uh, you know, falling down and, and getting in the oil circuit. So. so one other thing that I forgot to mention here is that you'll want to make sure and put a dab of some sealant up there, be it something like silicone or like a gasket maker, but right up there in that circled area in the bottom of that U where the gasket goes through that actually allows the wiring to pass into the cover. You'll need to seal that off to make sure that oil does not escape. So this is all cleaned up now. You can actually see there's a there's a gas right here. I did not do that. I did not pry there. I had nothing there. So I'm not really sure what that's what you can see now that I have cleaned up the area all around. So it should be ready for the uh, new gasket. Now I have refitted uh, the dowel pins and I took, uh, I took my finger, got a little bit of old oil and went around the uh, edge of the of the crankcase here i'm gonna slip this uh new gasket on now and i'll probably do a similar little kind of bead of oil all around the edge just to kind of lube it up all right so the cover's on now um the the eight millimeter bolts get torqued back in the same pattern uh, that they came off um tightened to 10 newton meters um, and then I've got the inspection cover back on and a, uh, a new badge decal for the middle there. Onto the clutch cover side now. The first thing that we're gonna do is loosen the lock nut for the clutch cable and then uh, the adjuster. I made a small uh, mark on the adjuster just so once I get it turned all the way back to the bracket, I know its thread was up, you know, quick, easy way to know where it was set and then once we've gotten that loosened, we're actually gonna pull the head of the cable out from uh, this hook here. So be patient with the uh, clutch cable, but eventually it will come free. And then after that, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually uh, remove this actuator arm from off of the, uh, the clutch case here. You'll notice that 
from the factory, there is a little alignment here, so we're just gonna maintain that once we get it apart. Our actuating arm is off now, so we're gonna pull uh, the bolts out of the case now. Um, these are three different lengths, so make sure that you uh, note which ones are positioned where. Um, I'm also gonna have a rag and uh, the catch can to catch any oil that comes out here. Here's my kind of simple strategy to keep the bolts um, in order. I'll try and get the diagram of which ones go where into the video. So here's that diagram. Note that this is not an order of removal. This is just marking the three different lengths of the three different bolts. There is a specific order to reinstall it and I'll show that diagram later. I had kind of a mini heart attack when I got the uh, cover off finally. Just want to save anyone else from that trouble. So this um, whatever axle or whatever you want to call it here had had it, it came out with the cover and that was exactly what had happened. So I opened this up and this is just sitting there loose. Um, but back in there, probably won't show up on video, but there is a hole uh, for that to slide into. So you just want to reposition everything, um, get this uh, axle back up in that slot, make sure those gears are all the way back to where these, these two here are mating. Um, get it back to the orientation it was when I started this little clip and you should be okay. So we've got a few components that we're gonna have to pull off of the old cover and add to the new one. Um, first of all, we've got this plate here and then over here we have all the mechanisms for actually actuating uh, the clutch itself. We have to swap that over. So the primary components are the plate on the right side, which is for sound deadening, and on the left, the arm which actuates the clutch. Now, that little arm, the little rod, goes and pulls straight out the bottom. You can see that there is a slot in the top of it which the spring will rest in. Uh, and a part of the spring sticks out of the top into a little slot. Now, the slot in the top of the arm, which grabs onto the spring, can obviously be flipped 180 degrees, so make sure you have that in the correct orientation so that it makes sense once it goes back on the bike. And keep in mind that that spring should be there. If you have taken your cover off and you don't see that spring, look down in the uh in the engine casing there as it may have fallen or it could be on the ground around you. On the right side, that sound deadening plate uh, should come off uh, with a little bit of work. Um, those uh, bolts were pretty stuck on there for me, but I got them off with some time and then it's just a matter of swapping all of that over onto your new engine casing. My mating faces were cleaned. Um, I've got my gasket back on being held in place by the dowel pins. Um, now we're going to refit the cover. We have to make sure that the um, the arm to actuate the clutch lines up correctly. Um, and you'll want to test that out as you install it to make sure that it's you know working properly. So I mentioned lining up the arm, which actuates the clutch pretty flippantly in the video, but this turned out to be the single longest portion of this job for me. So what I have circled there is the opening uh, of that rod, which is meant to wrap around the little kind of button that you saw in the previous clip. You'll see when you have this apart, you can see in that arm, there's a big opening that goes down to a little slot. You'll want to use the uh, actuating arm at the bottom of the, cl the uh, clutch cover to rotate that to the wide opening as you slip it on. Then once it's in place, you can kind of wrap around and you should be able to feel that slot, grab a hold of that button and almost pull the clutch cover towards the bike. My mistake here was once I did that, I couldn't move the actuating arm with my hand at all. And in my mind, that meant that it was binding and something wasn't working. And I cannot tell you how many times I put that clutch cover on and off trying to make sure that it was right. In the end, I realized that this might be the case. So I went ahead and put all the bolts back in place in their order and then uh, actually reconnected the clutch lever and pulled. Sure enough, it worked. So I'd had that right. I just had myself fooled. Um, so I hope this kind of helps explain that. Drop something in the comments if it still doesn't make sense because it was definitely a tricky part. I'll try and help you through it. 
This is actually a good example. You can see that um, I did not align this right as it can actually uh, free spin right now. I actually even got it to drop out. So um, obviously I'm gonna have to uh, pull the cover back off and, and set that back up right. So once you finally have the clutch actuating arm aligned, this is the order that you'll retighten the bolts. Make sure that you have the brackets for the clutch cable uh, in place before you tighten down 11 to 14 and 15. Um, after that, you're going to reinstall your badge, reinstall your plug, and then reinstall the uh, clutch adjuster. Get that set back like it was before you uh, started this. So here's a little sneak peek once you're all done. Um, I love it and I'm very happy with how it turned out. This is right smack in the middle of the uh, great quarantine of 2020. So tomorrow I'm gonna try and do a kind of a review video of the bike, cover the mods I've done. As this is probably the last thing I'll do to it for a little while, uh, but we all know how that goes. Anyway, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if this video helped you out. I'd like to go ahead real quick right here at the end and give a huge shout out to A&J Cycles New York who got me the engine covers in the first place and uh, were very helpful uh, to the questions that I had and also to Tinsley Custom Coatings in Easley, South Carolina for the uh, powder coating on the heel guards and the sprocket cover. He did an excellent job and I highly recommend him.